Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. So today, Group 4 will be presenting our written report on comparative analysis on drunk driving in Malaysia and Singapore, legal perspectives and penalties. As for the introduction, did you know that in 2020, the World Health Organization reported that approximately 1.3 million people die each year due to road crashes causing considerable economic losses to individuals, families and the country's economy as well estimated to cost 3% of most countries' gross revenue. From the reported statistic until February 2020, it showed that the rate of fatal road accidents in Malaysia was among the highest in the world. Thus, policies on driving under influence have been adopted in most of the countries all over the world, including Malaysia. The introduction of the Road Transport Amendment Act 2020, or known as the Amendment Act, which was enforced in October 2020. So, under Section 44 Plus 1, it referred as a person who is incapable of maintaining proper control of their vehicles as a result of being intoxicated. Under Section 44, it states about the penalties for driving while intoxicated and causing death or injury to another person. Looking at the Road Transport Act 1987 under Section 45G, it is, about for, it is for all types of drivers, which stated that it is an offence to drive a vehicle with a blood alcohol content exceed the prescribed limits. Moving on to the laws on drunk driving in Malaysia. So under Section 44 plus 1, it states that anyone who caused the death of any person whilst driving a vehicle on a road or public place under the influence of intoxicating liquor or drugs to such an extent that the person is incapable of having proper control of the vehicle shall be guilty of an offence. Next, under Section 44 plus 1A, makes it an offence to cause injury to another person whilst driving a vehicle on a road or other public place under the influence of intoxicating liquor to such an extent that the person is incapable of having pro proper control of the vehicle or whilst the concentration of alcohol in their breath, blood or urine exceeds the prescribed limit. On to section 45A, it creates an offence for driving or attempting to drive a motor vehicle or being in charge of a motor vehicle on the road or another public place while the alcohol concentration in their blood, breath or urine exceeds the prescribed limit. Uh, lastly, section 45 makes it an offence to be in charge of a motor vehicle on a road or public place whilst being unfit to drive the vehicle because they are under the influence of intoxicating liquor or drugs to the extent that they are incapable of properly controlling the vehicle. Next, I'm going to be talking about the three evidences for drunk driving, and which is the observed symptom, the opinion test, and the biochemical test. First, for the observed symptom, this method was used by observing the system of the car that is controlled by the drivers to monitor the driver's behavior. The features that are often used are the steering wheel and the speed meter. Next, for the opinion test, the drunk drivers were identified based on their driving behavior related to the vehicle movement itself, movement trace, or the movement trend of the car. It was easy to identify those drunk drivers based on the subjective judgment and the vigilance of the drivers. And lastly, the biochemical test, which um, several blood alcohol tests were done and the test results are used for drawing conclusions to determine the state of intoxication of someone. The two main biochemical tests that were used in Malaysia are the breath system and the touch system. Section 45C of the Penal Code stated that if you fail to provide such sample to the police when asked, you will be guilty of an offence and sentenced to imprisonment for a period not more than two years and a fine not more than $30,000. The next topic is regarding penalties for drunk driving offences. The penalty is the punishment imposed on an individual who violates the law, whether it is a statute or contract or a regulation. A penalty can be imposed in response to either civil or criminal violation, with civil penalties typically being less severe. Malaysia had enacted the Road Transport Act regarding the penalties for drunk driving. And before the amendments were done in 2022, the penalties were more lenient. For example, in Section 44, Subsection 5, that causes death. The imprisonment is only for 3 years and the fine is between 8,000 ringgit to 20,000 ringgit and the ban for driving is only for 5 years. In section 44, subsection 1A, that causing injury, the imprisonment is only maximum for 10 years and the fine is between 8,000 ringgit to 20,000 ringgit and is banned from driving for 5 years. For section 45A, that exceeds the prescribed limit, the imprisonment is only for 12 months, the, the fine is between 1,000 ringgit to 6,000 ringgit and there is no ban for driving. And in section 45, which is being in charge, the imprisonment is only for 3 months, the fine is 1,000 ringgit and banned from driving, which is according to based on court discreet. However, after the amendments being done in 2022, the Road Transport Act has provided a more harsher penalties. For example, in section 44, subsection 1, the in imprisonment had increased for between 10 years to 15 years. The fine is between 50,000 ringgit to 100,000 ringgit and banned from driving for 10 years. 
For Section 44, Subsection 1A, the increase may increase for a minimum 7 years to 10 years and the fine is between 30,000 ringgit to 50,000 ringgit and banned from driving for 7 years. And for Section 45A, the imprisonment to, has increased to maximum 2 years and the fine was 10,000 ringgit to 30,000 ringgit and banned from driving for 2 years. And in Section 45, the imprisonment has increased to 2 years and the fine is between 1,000 ringgit to 5,000 ringgit and banned from driving for 2 years. Section 85, Section 85 subsection 2A and Section 86 of the Penal Code could be used in raising defences for drunk driving. Section 85 of the Penal Code gives the same immunity as the man of unsoundness of man. This section provides the same immunity to an intoxicated man who involuntarily is in a drunkard state as it gives the immunity to the man of unsound of mind. While Section 85 subsection 2A of the Penal Code provides that in general intoxication could not be raised as a defence. However, there are some situations where the intoxicated could be raised as a defence and these circumstances are when the accused is not self-intoxicated and the accused due to intoxication had become insane at the time of the act. And lastly, Section 86 of the Penal Code that defines form intention. Intoxication shall be considered in determining whether the accused had formed any intention, specific or otherwise, in the absence of which he would not be guilty of the offence. There are a few cases that has used all these sections to raise defences for drunk driving. And the first one is DPP against Majeski in 1976, which the court ruled that the charge offence is one of basic intent and that the accused must be punished as if he was voluntarily intoxicated at the time of committing the offence, even if he lacked the mens rea and intention normally required for conviction of that offence. Next one is the public prosecutor against Labang Up and Pang in 2022, where the court has stated that it is not applicable for the accused to claim that he has become unsound of mind and is not well aware of his conduct and nature of act and did not know that his conduct could cause the damage and is contrary of the law. Next, in Abdul Aziz bin Muhammad Sharif against public prosecutor in 2010, it was held by the federal court that in order to prove intoxication, the defense must present sufficient evidence to convince the court that this rendered the accused incapable of forming the necessary intention or knowledge to commit the crime charge or that he was insane, temporarily or otherwise at the time he committed the crime. And lastly, in the cases of Muhammad Sufyan bin Haji Suhaili against public prosecutor also in 2010, the court held that the appellant should be convicted to a fine of $800 of four weeks of imprisonment and disqualification from driving for a period of four years. In her judgment, it is explained that the total disqualification period of four years is well served, bearing in mind the serious nature of the offence itself as he had caused the death of the two. For the part of analysis, we analyze the laws on drunk driving in Singapore. Same as Malaysia, in Singapore, intoxication is not a valid defense to any criminal charge. In Section 85, Subsection 2 of the Singapore Penal Code seems to provide three limited exceptions. Firstly, if the accused intoxication was caused without his knowledge or consent, and he had no idea what he was doing. The second one is if the accused intoxication was caused without his knowledge or consent, and he was unaware that his act or omission was wrong. And lastly, is the accused was of unsound mind. Next, the legal limit under Singapore Secretary Law is 35 micrograms of alcohol per 100 milliliters of breath or 80 micrograms of alcohol per 100 milliliters of blood. In the case of Paul Chukko against Public Prosecutor 1990, the petitioner pleaded guilty for drunk driving when he failed a breathalyzer test as his blood specimen was subsequently found to contain 148 micrograms of ethanol per 100 milliliters of blood. And in Singapore, the maximum penalties for a drunk driving offence are fined up to 10,000 Singapore dollars and jailed for up to a year for the first offence. And for the repeat offenders, can be fined up to 20,000 dollars Singapore and jailed for up to two years. And offenders will also be banned from driving for at least two years or at least five years for repeat offenders. And the period of disqualification from driving may be longer if the accused is also committed for dangerous In comparison with Malaysian law, we can see that Malaysian legislation has placed a greater emphasis on drunk driving issues than Singapore. As we can see on the other slide, that the Malaysian penalties is more strict than the Singapore penalties. But however, based on the impactful law, this cannot be used to determine which country has more solvent cases. This is because both countries are dealing with the same issue, which is an increase in drunk driving. Though, as a conclusion, there are numerous realities, outcomes, and dangers about alcoholic driving. Drunk driving is illegal, and numerous individuals still violate the law. Control and prevention are two most important aspects of amendment in order to deter the act of driving under influence which is in line with theories of punishment. And this comparative study is an effective way to improve legal flaws. Malaysia can improve their legislation by studying the laws of other countries. That is all from us. Thank you.